Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the analysis of frames and machines. So a frame or machine is a type of engineering structure where at least one member is not a two-force member. Uh, so this member will have act forces acting on it in more than three locations. So some examples of this, uh, this pair of scissors here, uh, we've got the two blade pieces are not two-force members. We would have presumably uh, some paper or whatever we're cutting acting on one end. We've got a pin joint in the middle and we've got the handle where you would be pressing on the other end. So both of the blade pieces are not two-force members. Uh, as well as this stool here, uh, each of the legs is not going to be a two-force member because it's going to have forces acting at the bottom, forces acting at that cross beam in the middle, and then forces acting at the top. So frame or machine uh, doesn't really matter for analysis. We're going to analyze these two things in a very similar way. So for the analysis of frames and machines, it works on the following assumptions. Number one, the structure we're analyzing is in static equilibrium. And if it's independently rigid, that means if you pick it up and all the pieces would kind of hold together as one piece, um, or all the pieces would not move relative to one another, then we can analyze the whole structure uh, as to find the external reaction forces. So from our previous example, the stool is independently rigid because we pick it up and it's kind of one uh, rigid body. The scissors are not because the two pieces, the two halves, can move relative to one another. So step one, we can find external reaction forces if possible. Um, the second assumption here is each component in the structure we are analyzing is also in static equilibrium and can be analyzed as a separate rigid body. So we can take it apart into pieces and do a rigid body analysis of each of those pieces. Uh, and then finally, whenever two components are connected, there will be a set of equal and opposite forces acting on each of the components at that connection point uh, in the form of a Newton's third law pair. So if the force, uh, if the connection forces are acting to the left on one body, they'll be acting to the right on the other body. All right, so with the whole process, let's run through this. So step one is to label the joints of the uh, frame and machine. So here I've got uh, letters, so A, B, and C up the left side, and then D and E, so each of the joints, and then to have I label the members by the points they connect. So I've got three pieces in this. I've got member ABC going up the left, member CDE going down the right, and then member BD is the cross beam. All right, so some other useful things at this point to look for. So we want to determine if the frame or machine is independently rigid. So imagine disconnecting it from its surroundings and picking it up. So this A-frame, if I kind of disconnect it at point A and point E, kind of pick it up, the A-frame is going to be independently rigid. So if it kind of flops around uh, when it's disconnected from the ground, then it is not independently rigid. So step two is we want to determine which members are two-force members. So are any of the members here a two-force member? Uh, and the answer is I've got at least one two-force member in here. So member ABC, it's got three points, it's not a two-force member. Member CDE on the right, uh, it's got four places where forces act. That's not a two-force member. But member BD is connected only at the two endpoints. So member BD is actually going to be a two-force member. All right, so after labeling our joints and kind of looking for certain things like independently rigid and two-force members, we move on to the next step. So step two, if and only if a frame is independently rigid, we treat the whole structure as a rigid body and solve for the external reaction forces. So in this case, I've got a pin joint connection at A, so I've got a force in the X and force in the Y, and then a roller joint at E, so I have a force in the Y direction only at point E. So if I solve for some of these external reaction forces, it's gonna make later analysis easier. All right, so step three, next we are gonna separate the members in the structure and draw a free body diagram of each member. So below I've uh, shown the free body diagram for each of the pieces. So we'll be guessing the direction of most of these forces, but uh, we're gonna remember that bodies in contact exert equal and opposite forces on each other. So it doesn't really matter what direction you do for one of these. So for FCX over here, I just guessed this was to the right. So if I'm wrong, that's fine. Uh, but what is important is if I guess to the right over here, I need to draw the force to the left over here. So these are my Newton's third law pairs. 
FCX goes to the right on this body, it goes to the left on this body. FCY goes up on this body, it goes down on this body. Anywhere there's a connection, I've got a set of equal and opposite forces. So FB goes to the right over here, it goes to the left over here. FD goes to the left over here, it goes to the right over here. All right, so we also remember need to remember that two force members will exert forces in a known direction. So I've got a pin joint up at the top. So at point C, I've got X and Y forces, but my two force member, BD, uh, is gonna be just in tension or just in compression. So there's no Y component at B or D uh, because this two force member here uh, has to have forces acting along the direction of the member itself. All right, so after I get my free body diagrams uh, all set up, next step is to write out your equilibrium equations for each component. So we have sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and sum of moments about some point. So in this case, I'm saying sum of moments about point A uh, for member ABC. All right, so you may have more than three unknowns for any one component. So if I look at this, if I've already solved for AY, AX and AY over here, uh, then I have one, two, three unknowns, and I'd be able to solve uh, for all of those forces just the, with the one free body diagram, one set of equations. But if I do not have that, that's also still okay. So some of these forces repeat. So if I get three equations off of this, I have five unknowns. I don't know these two beforehand. Uh, I can still solve for this eventually, but I'd probably need to start somewhere else. So I can have three equations per component and I cannot exceed uh, however many equations total that I have, uh, but like CX and CY repeat. So once I know them here, I can uh, plug them in as known values over here. All right, step five is of course, solve your equilibri equilibrium equations for unknown forces. So uh, if we wind up with a negative number, it means the direction of the force is opposite of what was shown in your free body diagram. So I guessed that CX was pointing to the right over here and to the left over here, but if I solve for CX and I got a negative number, so like negative 50 pounds, uh, I know that I did this, this backwards. So CX should have been pointing to the left over here and to the right uh, over here. So it should have been pointing in on both of these. Um, so negative numbers indicate a change in direction. Uh, and we can use computer tools if we have a large number of equations and un unknowns. So potentially here, I could have three equations for uh, ABC, three more equations for CDE. And for remember BD, it's really only kind of one set of equations, it's just forces in the X, because my Y equations and my moment equation for this uh, piece are kind of uninteresting. But that's still seven equations with seven unknowns. If you have the computer tools, Wolfram Alpha or MATLAB, you can use these for these complex problems. All right, so one extra piece that I wanna add on to the end with this is how do we describe the solutions for a frame and machine problem? So unlike trusses, we can't just list the magnitudes of the forces with tension and compression for individual members for a solution. So we will need to be more specific because the situation is more complex. We're not just gonna have tension or compression. We have forces in the X, we have forces in the Y, we have moments, uh, and all of these things can happen in different directions and um, at different points. So we can't even list magnitudes and directions because these forces come in, come in pairs. So I say the force at C is 50 pounds to the right. Is it 50 pounds to the right on body one or is it 50 pounds on the other body um, because we're gonna have a set of forces that might be the left on one and to the right on the other. So how we do this is the best way to show all the forces acting on the components is to draw all components in a second free body diagram with the known magnitudes and known directions drawn on each component individually. So take a component, so here I've got ABC, this is a different ABC, uh, and draw all the forces acting on that component at the respective uh, points of application in their respective directions. So any negative numbers we got in our uh, numerical solutions, incorporate them in here, and so draw the arrows the opposite way for those negative solutions to show all of the correct directions in the end. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.